Hallelujah. God is good to us. Amen. Good to see everybody. I thank God for being here and I thank God for this opportunity. Hallelujah. Bishop, amen, come to me and told me, he said, he's going to be out for a little while. I said, hey, well, amen, amen. He says, but I need you to speak. I said, oh, Lord, oh, Lord. Hey, praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Amen. But God is a good God and God gives us opportunity. And a lot of times I hear people say all the time that, oh, my goodness, you just put me on the spot. Well, no, he didn't give you, he didn't put you on the spot. He just give you an opportunity. Amen. And so we have to take the opportunities and actually do something with them. Amen. I thank God for the musicians. Amen. I thank God for our praise warriors and I praise God for the women. Amen. Singing the song of victory. Amen. Good to see all of you. My wife is here and I have a visitor here with us, my dear niece. Hallelujah. Jaquana Campbell. Amen. And you're right. That smile is just like mine. I I showed that girl how to smile. So the smile is for real, amen. I'm just glad to see her. Totally unexpected, amen, that her coming in here. But it's good to see all of you. Amen. I see uh, that pastor right there behind. Amen. Good to see you, sir. Amen. Amen. Good to see all of you. There is a word I want to share, and it's a word that actually, it, it took me and it kind of turn me and twist me quite a bit amen in the midnight hour and it's so much to the point that I had said within myself I said ah, uh, evangelist I, I think I might need to look at something else because he was whooping me through this word amen and so I said well I said Lord let, let me look over in the book of Ruth and I'll teach I'll, I'll teach and preach all four chapters of Ruth he said not so I couldn't put another word together Amen. I looked over into Jeremiah and I said, before I was formed in the belly of thy mother's womb, I knew thee. I said, oh yeah, that's going to be it right there. He says, no, sir. Couldn't put a word together. And no matter how I tried to get past this, it was right there. So we're going to look at 2 Timothy today. Amen. And our pastor has already been going through the life and the understanding of Paul. Amen. For the entire week. And if you have, if you were here, you heard the whole story concerning Paul and the history of Paul and everything and, and the places that he come from and the things that he had to go through. Amen. And that's why I use the word endure. Amen. The scripture is going to tell us to endure hardness. That's a good soldier of Jesus Christ. Amen. It's going to tell us to endure no matter what's going on in our life. We got to endure. I heard the testimonies of the saints that came up. And I'm, 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 I'm with uh, Evangelist Irons. Everything was to the glory of God. Amen. I have two been, uh, my sister, at this flight level, three, uh, thir three zero, 30, 30,000 feet in the air. And certain things go on with my airplanes. Amen. Had situations where engines shut down on an aircraft with four engines, three of them shut down. In flight, amen, had a hole in the side from a mortar round that hit the side of the aircraft right near where we actually do our refueling. But God kept us. Amen. This is the kind of God we serve. God kept us. Amen. These are things that I haven't even found time to share a lot of them with my wife. But this word actually uh, brought me back and says, God, God has caused me to go through certain things that would have caused other people to shake. Amen? But God has kept us through danger seen and unseen. Amen, somebody. I know you're in this house. Amen. So I know I have a witness here. So uh, uh, my thing to you is, as much as we hear it, people all the time talking about going here and there and moving back and forth, my thing is endure. Don't leave your blessed place. Amen. Endure. Don't leave the blessed place. Amen. A lot of times people uh, see certain little situations that happened in their life and they says, and because they have prayed about it, because they have went to God about it. Amen. They think God has not heard them. God has left them alone, but they see other people getting blessed all the time. Why don't you consider me God? But I'm, God is telling you to endure. 
Hallelujah. Endure. Hallelujah. The thing that you actually suffering, you'll find out they're not as bad as you would think. Amen. They are not as bad as you suppose. Amen. So we go to the scripture text, 2 Timothy chapter 2, verses 3 through 4, and I printed the New King James Version. It says, you therefore must endure hardness as a good soldier of Jesus Christ. No one in, engaged in warfare. And we are, in, we are soldiers on the battlefield. How many of you know that we're in a war? We're in a spiritual war right now that a battle is raging all around us. Children are dying. Children are losing their lives because mothers decide that they don't want them anymore. There are situations going on in our school system. We're in a war, people. So the word of God has come and says endure. So no one in, uh, engage in warfare himself with the affairs of this life. Amen. We worry too much about the minors. We major in too many of the minors in our lives. Hey, somebody stepped on my foot. Ha. Uh, I ain't going to speak to them. Somebody looked at me cross-eyed. We major too much in the minors. Maybe they didn't see you. Maybe something was going on with their eyes. Amen. And it wasn't all about you. Amen. But we are majoring in those minor things instead of in doing anything. A lot of times people come and step on my feet and they say, oh, I'm sorry. I said, don't worry about it. I said, I'll walk on the bottom. You can walk on the top. We use the whole shoe that way. Hey, you didn't hear me in here. Hallelujah. That way I don't pay for half a shoe. I, I, I won't use the whole shoe. Amen, somebody. No one engaged in warfare entangles himself with the affairs of this life that he may please him who enlisted him as a soldier. You didn't enlist yourself. Amen. You have been chosen. You a royal priesthood, a holy nation, a, a, a peculiar people. Amen. You are set, up, set apart. Amen. To do a work for the Lord. Amen. We must remember Paul was now a prisoner for the second time. This was not his first time. If you have followed what our pastor has already given us, if you had been here on last night and heard the other Coleman, how he went forward. Amen. Bless my soul. Yes, it did. If you have heard the words that's actually come through here already, you will know Paul's life. You will have an understanding of who Paul really is. Amen. But he was in prison for his second time. And the first time that he was there, he was not just, he was not on a death sentence, but he was in jail. Moving from one location to another location. And if you will follow the history and follow the lifestyle of Paul, you will know that he was staying in houses during that time. Uh, he was a prisoner. He was locked up. Amen. In a, in a situation, but he was living in somewhat comfort, somewhat creature comforts. But now he's in a situation where he's in a dungeon. He's locked in prison and been sentenced for life. But he sticks outside of scripture and comes and tells us, don't matter what you're going through, endure. 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 Amen? And it's something sometimes when preachers comes up, and have to tell you to endure because you never know what that preacher is going through. We hear our pastor all the time coming with the testimonies of his life and his life story. And I said so many a time, I said, I said, Bishop, if I had only been with you 20 years ago, walked with you 20 years ago, ain't there no, no telling where I would be now. And I still keep that word. Now, I don't want you to misunderstand anything. I wasn't saying I want his life. Amen. Because a lot of the things that he has to endure, I don't think I could have gone through. Amen. I can't. I don't know if I could have gone through a situation where somebody's holding a gun to my head. Amen. And threatening my life. I don't know if I can go through a situation where somebody's holding a knife to my throat. Amen. I don't know if I can go through the situations that he's actually shared with the church, but the church is still telling you to come here. Endure. Endure hardness as a good soldier of Jesus Christ, he's speaking from a situation of jail. Amen? So the word of God is not bound. As much as a prisoner is bound, the word of God is not bound. The word of God is far-reaching. 
And if you look at me now, you understand what I mean by far reaching. It reaches every corner of our universe. The word of God is out there. It touches your life while it's touching my life at the same time. It's pulling you out of situations while it's pulling her out of situations at the same time. God's word is alive. It's alive and well. We don't serve no dead God. Amen. We come into the church and we sit down and we take our seats, but we don't understand a lot of times what we just walked into. We don't understand that this is a living and breathing institution or organization. It's not an organization, but it's an organism. Amen, somebody. It's an organism of, of, of baptized believers who confess hope in Christ and desires to understand what's going on in their life. I want to know what you want to do with me, Lord. I want to know what you want to do with me because I want to step into your glory. I want to hear the word saying, well done, thy good and thy faithful servant. And the only way to hear those words is we have to go through something. We have to endure. We have to understand, first of all, that you're going to go through something. No matter what your situation, no matter what your life looked like, it might be roses right now, but what did you just come through? It might be roses now, but did he bring you through the storm and the rain in order to get you here where you're smelling like roses? And you can't see far down the road because ain't no telling what two steps down might bring. But the Lord is saying, endure. He's still telling you, endure. In 2 second, second Timothy chapter 2, verses 8 through 12, amen, it says, remember that Jesus Christ of the seed of David was raised from the dead according to my gospel, for which I suffer trouble as an evildoer, even to the point of chains, but the word of God is not chained. Therefore, I endure all things for the sake of the elect. Hallelujah. I can stop there for just a second. How many of you are doing or going through some situations in your life? How many of you got situations going on that you don't know how you're going to come out? You might be like my sister over here with the mortgage situation. Hallelujah. But all you got to do is keep pressing towards the mark of the prize of the high calling, and God is going to give you an answer. Endure. Mm. Therefore, I endure all things for the sake of the elect, that they also may obtain the salvation which is in Christ Jesus with eternal glory. This is a faithful saying, for if we died with him, we shall also live with him. If we endure, we shall also reign with him. If we deny him, he also will deny us. If we go through, we got to go, you got to go through a situation like you know that God is going to answer your prayer. As you know and understand, I might be suffering right now, but I'm going to keep pressing towards that mark. No matter what's going on right now, I'm not living for the right now. I'm living for the hereafter. Amen. We are not of this world we're not just here of this world but we are passing through we are on our way somewhere so what happens to us thereafter amen that's why we live our life in understanding that there's a greater a greater a greater to be obtained for us the fleshly body. We worry about this body. Yeah, I used to be six foot two. I'm still six foot two. Well, I'm six foot one and a half now. I mean, I kind of shrank a little bit. Amen. I used to be a 185. Well, I'm still 185. Well, I'm 217 now because some other things have started expanding in different places. Amen. And I used to be able to run and jump. I could jump off of this thing. Well, I can't jump off of this thing right now because my knees won't let me amen so I have to endure the small things in my life and not make them a large ob object amen I have to go through some things I'm going to understand that change will come but change don't have to drive me amen change don't have to drive me 
Jesus came. Jesus is fulfilled. Jesus is in the uh, fulfillment of all the promises that God gave to David in 2 Samuel chapter 7, verse 16. Here, here's the thing. Since the time that I commanded judges to be over my people Israel and have caused you to rest from all your enemies. You know, how many of you know you have some enemies? Amen. If you're in this walk, you have some enemies. Everybody's not on your side that they say. Amen. Everybody say, yeah, yeah, yeah. Don't mean they yeah, yeah, yeah. They mean yeah right now, but wait until you turn your back. Amen. I got something for you. Amen, somebody. Also, the Lord tells you that he will make you a house. When your days are, ful are fulfilled and your rest with your father, I will set up your seed after you. This is the promises that God has actually given unto David, amen, in the in book of Samuel. Amen. All of you that's in uh, 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 the, uh, what, what is it, uh, survey of the Bible, when I mentioned the word David, you should already know we're talking about 2 Samuel. Amen. It already indicates to you that something is going on with Samuel. Look at verse, verse 14. I will be his father and he shall be my son. That's the promise right there. That's the one I hold on to. I, want, I am the son of God. I am a son. I am an heir and a joint heir with Jesus Christ. I stand upon the promise that God has actually given me. When I'm troubled within myself, I stand upon the promise that he will never leave nor forsaken me, even until the end. My end is not yet, so I know he's still here. I can't see behind me. I can't see all of the things that's going on behind me, but I got angels all around me. Amen, somebody. And you got to receive that. Yourself, you got to have an understanding that God's got your back. No matter what's going on in your life, God has your back. But if you mess up, if he commit iniquity, I will chasten him. And this nobody wants to be chasing. You see, I underline that. Because a lot of times, even now in this present age of 62, I know I go through some chastening. I know sometimes God is actually correcting me because... I know me. I get wrong. I'm not right all the time. Amen. L L uh, Pastor Youngblood, you hear what I'm saying? I'm not right all the time. I, I try. Pastor Rooks, I try to be right. I tell you that I'm right. I stand up and look like I'm right, but I know I'm not right all the time. Amen. I will chasten him with the rod of men and with the blows strikes of the son of man. But my mercy shall not depart from him. And I took it from Saul as I took it from Saul, whom I removed from before you. It's, the thing is, when Saul came on the scene, this Saul, not the Saul known as Paul, but this Saul. When this Saul came on the scene, he didn't want it in the first place. And then when he actually accepted what God was actually giving him, he abused it. He took it and he abused it and God took it from him. We have to be careful with the gifts that God has actually shared with us and understand we must use those gifts for the fathering of the kingdom here on this earth. It's not about me. It's not about me up here trying to preach. It's not about me. It's not about me standing in the gap for somebody. It's not about me. I am here only to do what my father has commanded me to do. Preach the word. Be instant, in season, out of season. Reprove, rebuke. Oh, you're not hearing me. Hallelujah. So it's not about us. It's about us doing what our father has said. Our gifts mean something. Everybody in here has gifts. There's gifts and talents everywhere. And if we actually do what Elder Patterson has just requested us to do and actually find him here on Saturday morning, we can go out and share of those gifts and those talents. Amen? And we'll find out it's really not about us and I really do have something to offer. You should see our young people when they go out and they go out and they witnesses and they knocking on doors and they talking to people in the streets. You can't beat them being good. You can't beat them shining. Amen. Because everything, if you lend yourself to God, 
God will open up everything, all of your understanding, and let you, let you know exactly who you are and what you have to offer. And you do have something to offer. Verse 15. But my mercy shall not depart from him as I, as I took, took it from Saul, whom I removed from before you. Verse 16. And your house and your kingdom, this is the thing, and your house and your kingdom shall be established forever before you. And see, I called Pastor Youngblood's name just a little bit ago, and I think he has five sons. Am I right, sir? Oh, I'm sorry. First Lady Youngblood is there as well. They have five sons. I, I, I happen to know at least four of them. I'm not so sure if I know the fifth one, but I know four of them. And one thing that he's doing as a pastor, he's leading his children. He's molding him and actually putting them in place. He's been doing it ever since I had known him. I was a recruiter recruiting for the Air Force. Amen. And all of a sudden, here comes this man in, and he's bringing his sons. Three of his sons at different times I talked to and recruited. I think two of them went into the Air Force. Amen. And they stayed in for a season for four years or so and got certain things done. And now, next thing you know, they're out of the Air Force and now they are pastoring churches all over the place. They're all over different places, pastoring some in Arkansas, some in different places, pastoring churches. Others are witnessing for the Lord. So his seed shall continue. Amen. This is what we're talking about. What we have is a gift within ourselves is not just for us. It's for our children and our children's children. Amen? We are to pour in the little bit that we know. My, the amount that I know concerning God, and you can probably take a, a, a safety pin and, and lock my little knowledge on the top of the safety pin and walk around with it. I don't know enough to be boastful in God. But with what I have, I pass on. I want to give it to somebody else. Come on, somebody. Praise the Lord in this place. Amen. So the things that's going on with you, no matter what those things are, whether it's financial crisis, loneliness, whatever the case may be, failure. Have you gone into a, a classroom setting and taken some administrative test or whatever? If you're having a, a problem trying to pass certain tests, don't worry, God's got it. Don't give up. Never give up. Health crisis, emptiness. People suffer from loneliness all the time. One of the greatest needs that we have is the, the need to belong. Amen, somebody. We need to belong somewhere. So whether it's career pressures, work issues, loss of loved ones, unfair treatment in the workplace or in the street, it does not matter. The word says, thou therefore endure hardness as a good soldier of Jesus Christ. And never, never, ever give up. It does not matter about what the pressures are. Don't give up. Second Timothy chapter 3, verses 13, we're moving forward. But evil men and, and imposters will grow worse and worse. In other words, they ain't going nowhere. The evil people will come into your life and they will try and speak in your life if you let them. But you got to try. Listen, the God that you serve, the God that's in you will make will openly confess who you are to anybody. When evil people come into your life. Try the spirit by the spirit and see if they are of God. And if they are not, the word tells us like going to someone's house and knocking on the door if they don't receive you. Kick the dust off and move on. You ain't got to sit and listen to everybody that wants to talk. Now, yeah, you can learn. I can learn from anybody. Amen? I don't care who they are. I don't care what they walk. I can learn from anybody, even if it's down to the point of me learning not to do what they just did. Amen, somebody. Yeah, I can, I can learn from anybody. Amen. I don't have to hold everything all so clear because even when someone is preaching, like I'm preaching right now, I'll go back. I'm taking my notes and I'm going back and I'm doing my research. So when I get home during the week, I'm looking back over the word. 
I want to see how the words actually lining up. Amen. You don't just take anything anybody says and just walk with it. Learn from anybody. Amen. Even if you're learning what? What not to do. James 1, 12 through 14. I saw a sister walk in here last night when the word was going forward. And she had the one word on her chest. It says, endure. And when I said, when I saw that, it said, it just says, endure, which means uh, I'm standing up on the strength of it, not my strength. I'm standing up on God's strength. It just says, endure. Amen. And I immediately referred back, which message was not complete yet, because I didn't finish this until about four or five o'clock this morning. Amen. It just said, endure. And so I entitled this message coming to you, endure. And sometimes preachers within themselves, when you have loved ones or you have someone who actually, and I'm not talking about just male, male preachers, amen, somebody, I'm going to hurt somebody's feeling, women preach too. You just uh, witnessed a lady that was here before I who had this mic, amen, I can't, you can't beat her preaching. Amen. Don't, don't try and fool me, make me think I'm great. I used to follow her around, amen, from church to church and want to see her and stand in the back. Never go, never went forward and shake her hand, never went and said nothing and so on and so forth. I just know that God lived there. There was a gift that was going on on the inside. Evangelist Irons is somebody. Amen. So the word says endure, everything, everything about it was endure. So I immediately looked at the scripture that she was actually carrying on her chest and I found it in James chapter 1 verses 12 through 14. It says, blessed is the man who endures temptation for when he has been approved, he will receive the crown of life. Amen? He will receive the crown of life. Of life. I understood something that she knew something while she was wearing that on her chest, on her shirt. While she was walking, she was walking in a power that perhaps she didn't know all about, but she was standing up on the promise of God, understanding the fact that he had her back. Yea, though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, I fear no evil. Why? Because thou there. preparing a table before me in the presence of my enemy, anointing my head with oil. He's there. So what we got to do is we got to endure. Amen? Continuing, I am tempted by God. Cannot say, let no one say when he is tempted, I am tempted of God. For God cannot be tempted by evil, nor does he himself tempt anyone. But each one is tempted when he is drawn away by his own desires and enticed. See, we, we, we had the scripture wrong. I, I, every time I look at that about God being, uh, you know, we had it wrong when we said God would not put more on us than we can bear. And I think I mentioned that in my last message that I brought. It's not in the word. It's not in scripture. Although as other scriptures that allude to the fact that he will be with you through your precious. We have it wrong when he says God would not put more on me than I can bear. Search your scripture. If you find it, please come back and, and check me. I want to find it too because I've looked through the word. I've searched through the word and I'm not able to find it anywhere. But what he says was, I would not allow you to be tempted above that which you are able to withstand. For within the temptation, I'll make a way of escape. So he's talking about temptations and not pressures that life brings. Life brings you many trials and many situations. God's going to be there with you, yes. Amen. But to say that he won't allow certain things to come up on you, we will be in error. Because we'll look at a young man by the name of Demas. 
certain temptations came in his life, Demas had forsaken the apostle. Look at 2 Timothy chapter 4, verses 3 through 5. Amen. For the time will come when they will not endure sound doctrine, but according to their own desires, because they have in itching ears. That's one thing people got a lot of itching ears. They need to stay off that Facebook, always looking for the preacher. Somebody sitting in the middle of their Volkswagen preaching. You sitting there, you got enough, to, enough nerve to sit there and listen to a 30-minute message while they, they, they sitting in the back of an Uber and preaching to you. Amen? For the time will come when they will not endure sound doctrine, but according to their own desires, because they have itching ears, they will heap mm, up for themselves teachers, and they will turn their ears away from the truth and be turned aside to fables. But you be watchful in all things. That's the word. Be watchful in all things and do afflictions. Do the work of an evangelist. Fulfill your ministry. I, I told you everybody has a ministry. But see, we talk about this young man, Demas, and I pray none of you have the spirit while you're working the works of God and while you're supporting your pastor and while you're moving forward, back and forth in life, be careful not to take on the spirit of Demas. Amen? Verses 9 and 10. Be diligent to come quickly. This is Paul urging people to come to help. Why? For Demas had forsaken me, having loved this present world, and has departed from Thessalonica. This is something that the word is telling us. That someone has actually departed. And you think it's a new thing? You think it's a now thing that people are doing those things now? That they are leaving your church? That they are leaving your assembly? You think it's just now happening that people are running away? That people are turning aside? But I'm here to tell you, don't leave the blessed place. Amen. Your testimony says that you've been blessed. Your testimony says that you're winning. That your testimony says you're victorious. Don't leave your blessed place. Am I talking about this building or this house? No, I'm talking about God. Am I talking about this pastor? No, he'll tell you himself. No, we're talking about God. If God calls you forward in ministry, we have a pastor that's ready to send you out. He makes it plain daily that you're not here to stay. You can't park here. Amen. There's no stop sign on your seat that says stop right here and stay for 10 years. You can't park here. Amen. So who was Demas? Demas had at one time been one, one of Paul's fellow workers in the gospel ministry along with Mark, Luke, and some of the others. And you'll find that in Philemon uh, chapter 1 verse 24. But in 2 Timothy chapter 4 and 10, Paul wrote about this sad situation. says, Demons, because he loved this world, has deserted me and has gone to Thessalonica. Mm. There is also biblical evidence that Demas was with Paul during, the, during his second imprisonment in Rome, at least for a while. Then something happened. Demas forsook Paul, abandoned the ministry, and left town. Mm. Not only uh, abandoned the ministry, but he left town. Paul wrote about this sad situation. Amen? So the Greek verbs used in the original implies that Demas had not merely left Paul, but had abandoned Paul in a time of need. Paul was in prison facing death, a death sentence. Mm. Talking about a time to leave. And that was when Demas chose to set sail. Undoubtedly, Paul was deeply, deeply let down by Demas. It's never easy to see a friend or an associate in whom you place so much trust forsake you in the midst of hardship, in the midst of hard times. It's Charles Spurgeon, one of the great 
pastors of the 1800s, the last portion of the 1800s, had a similar situation that went on concerning his life. Spurgeon wrote many a books, preached many a sermons, went many a different places. Amen. But he said, ours is more than mental work. It is the heart work, the labor of our inmost soul. So when our heart is broken, we must labor with a broken instrument. Have you ever tried to unscrew a, a screw with a screwdriver that had a bad tip? Have you ever tried to grip hold to something with a pair of grip pliers where the, the, the inside portion of it was already broke? See, sometimes you have to go on, you have to press on, regardless of what's going on around you. Charles Spurgeon was in the same situation as Paul. Charles Spurgeon is in the same situation as many other pastors that I know. He's in the same situation as a lot of men that I know who's still trying to do a work for the Lord, but the ones that he depended upon the most had turned and left. Y'all, you haven't heard from him in a month. Or you haven't heard from him in a, a couple of weeks even. Or even if you hadn't heard from him in a week. Amen. And at the same time, you're wondering, wait a minute, what's going on with the church? You said that was your first love. You said you've been called. You said you was one of God. Chosen. Amen. One crushing stroke has sometimes laid the ministry very low. The brother most relied upon became a traitor. Ten years of toil do not take so much life out of us as we lose in a few hours. In a few hours. By Ahithophel. Ahithophel was a counselor in the times of David. He would counsel with David. He was actually known as a man who actually had the ear of God. He was known as somebody who actually God listened to and he heard from God. And so he counseled David. But he left David and went another way. But Demas, the apostle, Demas was given authority. Demas was working in the ministry. Demas was actually doing some things that was just awesome, that was necessary. And he left because he started seeking after the things of the world. My Lord, I'm, I'm, I'm getting close to finish. I'm not as long-winded as Bishop. <laughs> Amen. I can't do all of the hoops and the runs and the hops and I can't dance. If I dance, you're going to have to come up here and pick me up. Amen. Ain't got no balance. Knees ain't no good. Feet hurt too. So I'm, I'm, I'm getting to a point of closing. As hard as it may get, don't leave the blessed place. As hard as it, difficult as things may get in your life, don't you leave the blessed place. No matter what you're facing as far as pressures of life or situations that's going on in your life, don't leave the blessed place. The blessed place is right here in this place. In this place. Not this place, but this place. This place is important. Forsake not the assembling of yourselves together. Amen? But don't leave the blessed place. Don't lay your armor down. Don't walk away from God and God's authority. Don't walk away from the promise that God has actually given in your life. Don't walk away from the things that God has already placed in your family and given an understanding concerning your family. Don't walk away from the blessings that God has already poured upon you. You know that washing machine wasn't supposed to work this long and it's still going. It's only the blessings of the Lord. Don't leave the blessed place. He's got you. He's holding on to you. Don't leave the blessed place. God has got your back. His promises are yay, yay, and amen. You know the word. Don't leave the blessed place. Mm. Philippians 3.14 gives my testimony. No matter what's going on in my life, Philippians 3.14 brings my testimony. Amen. 
I press towards the mark of the prize of the high calling in Christ Jesus. What do you mean, preacher? I mean, no matter what's going on, I'm going to find a way to press on. I get down within my spirit. I get down within my soul. Certain things cause me to stumble, but I get back up, dust myself off, and I press towards the mark. What mark? I want to be with him. I want to live with him. I want to hear him say, well done, thy good and thy faithful servant. I want to hear him call my name and say, John, you did good. Amen. So I continue to press. No matter what's going on and who's bothering me and who's stepping in around me, I press towards the mark of the prize of the high callings. Romans 8, 38 and 39. For I am persuaded, oh yeah, that neither death nor life. Ha! Ah, nor life, nor angels, nor principalities, nor powers, nor things present, nor things to come. I don't care if they're not here yet. I ain't nothing, nothing, nothing shall separate me from the love of God. Nothing. I press, I press because I know where he brought me from. I know what I've gone through. I know the dangers that have been seen. I know those dangers that he moved that I saw. I know when he covered me up and he shielded me and protected me on dangers that I didn't see. I understand God has me in his center of his will. God takes care of me. I dare not leave him alone. I dare not walk away from him. So I press. In 2 Timothy 4, 16 through 18, at, the, at my first answer, no man stood with me. And this is the sad thing. The sad thing. Just like Spurgeon, you can look in your own life and you can see situations where people have left. You can see situations where people walked away from you. You can see situations where people that you depended upon they left you without reason, without question. People will leave you. God won't. God is always there. We can't see him. We can't feel him. One says, I looked on my right hand and I, didn't, I couldn't find him. And I went to my left and I perceived him not. He wasn't there either. But I'm here to tell you that God's always there. He's always got your back. I was told you I was military. You, I, I didn't have to tell you that. A lot of people just know it. Amen. I was flying on my airplane, and every time my airplane fly, I flew with it. And so we were this time in Thailand, Utapau, Thailand. Got over there, just me and the flight crew carrying a, a load of, I don't know what, it was wrapped up real tight. We got over to Utapau, Thailand, and the plane broke. Certain things happened with the plane. And we called headquarters Air Force and told them we needed such and such part. He says, but I, we don't have that part in, the, in this region. He says, we're going to have to get that part sent in from the states. I'm over in Thailand. He says, but I want the flight crew, pack your bags. I'm sending another aircraft in there. I'm going to pick them up. I got another mission for them. Tell the crew chief, me, tell the crew chief to hold the plane. I'm in Utapau, Thailand. Don't know nobody. Don't know the language. And the parking ramp is in the middle of the jungle. He said, tell the crew chief, Ellis, to hold the plane. One airplane the next day landed and picked the flight crew up and took off. And I'm standing there watching them leave. Didn't know nobody. I said, everybody has left me. It's got to be the situation that they're facing. I'm there in a situation where I don't know what's going to happen. I'm depending on them to get back and forth to the little hotel. And the hotel that we were staying in, only six rooms in the middle of the woods. Cockroaches. They bring me a sandwich. I order a sandwich. They bring me a sandwich and a bug crawls out of the sandwich. Didn't have nothing else, so guess what? Yeah, I ate it. Amen. 
kicked the bugs on out, named him. <laughs> Took them three days before they sent me my part and another flight crew to fly me out. Took me 45 minutes to install the part, to take the old part off and put the new part on. And then we took off and, and we left. Sometimes people leave you because they don't have a choice. Sometimes people leave you because the mission requires them to go. But your mission is required for you to stay. Sometimes they have no choice. Quit pointing your fingers back at people. The afflictions that you actually suffer sometimes make you. It is good for me that I have been afflicted that I might learn thy statutes. If I hadn't gone through anything, I wouldn't pick the word up to try to study it. I wouldn't know anything about God as right now. I've had so many situations in my life. So many things going on in my life. I was structured because I'm the military. And a lot of you can look at me now and say, he's still structured. I know. That a X is an X, an I is an I, and it needs a dot. A T needs to have a cross. That's just, that's just who I am. Amen? But God puts us through situations that we had. We know we must depend upon him. In Tegu, Korea, standing over in Tegu, Korea, still didn't know nobody. Got out there and had an engine failure, the entire engine, engine failure on the aircraft. Headquarters Air Force says, lead the crew chief right there. He said, flight crew, I need you. At least they had me a nice hotel. So I lived in the hotel. But I went back and forth every day, had walked back and forth every day, about four or five miles. Wasn't that for four or five miles? Go back to the aircraft, sit on the aircraft for six, seven hours, make sure everything's okay. Go back, try and reach headquarters on the, on the aircraft radio because there wasn't no such thing, no cell phone. Don't you be talking about no cell phone? You didn't have your phone? Get on the radio, turn on. Next thing I know, my battery is running low, but I'm sitting there on the phone, on the radio, trying to call headquarters. When is my engine coming in? The entire engine. Finally got them. They called the hotel, and I talked to them, and they says, your engine is, will be there tomorrow at such and such a time. I'm sending three people over to help you change that motor. Amen. Got the engine changed, and we was out. But let me tell you what happened in between that. Walked in the streets in Tegu, Korea. Knew nobody. Didn't understand the language. Amen. Another situation. Young man, well, older guy. He out, seems to be an alcoholic. Walks up to me and he always had his hand out. I got to the point where I was like, man, gone somewhere. And I walk on to the next. I'm looking in the store windows. I'm, I'm just kind of looking around. And he keeps walking, following behind me. With his hand out. And I ain't stop, I stopped paying him any attention. So I'm looking in the store window. And all of a sudden, when I turn around, it's a whole crowd, like 20 or 30 Koreans, just kind of standing there looking at me while he's begging me. I reach in my pocket and I grabbed a dime, 10 cent. I grabbed a dime and put a dime in his hand. And he walked away and he bowed and he bowed and he thanked me. And there was a bridge in a far distance. And when he got across that bridge, he was still sitting there bowing. And the crowd kind of dispersed. And I'm like, I'm saying to myself, I just gave you a dime. It was just 10 cents. The next day, I'm leaving the hotel room. All of a sudden, he walks up to me and he had a wad of Korean bills in his hand. And he forced them, put them in my hand. I said, no, I didn't give you that much money. He said, and I said, no. And the crowd came around me. And he forced it the last time. And I said, thank you very much. I can't speak that language. I'm not going to sit there and say I'm not going to take it. 
cause no situation. Y'all know I'm still preaching, right? Mm -hmm. So I left with the money in hand. I went on back, walked on my airplane. Heart still not there, no word, nothing, nothing. And I turn around and I come back to the hotel. And one young girl who works there at the desk, she could speak a little bit of English. And I said, excuse me. She said, yes. I said, do you know the man? I described the man. She says, I know. I said, this is his money. Would you please do me a favor and get this money back to him? She says, I, I will. The next morning I got up and walked to the airplane, didn't see the man, come back later on that evening, and I saw the little girl, and I says, hey, 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 did you find the man? She says, I find him. I said, did you give him the money? She said, no can give. I says, why? She said, he dead. Somewhere in between that, God, I feel, God had dispatched an angel to come to caution me about my life. Sometime, somewhere within that whole situation, God had dispatched somebody to come and to give me a reality check. You never know what's going on with people. You don't know why certain people leave you and why certain people, do this, why this happens, why that happened. You just have to understand that everything that we are, we are gods. Everything that we are, I didn't say that we are gods. Don't take that out of here. But we belong to God. Everything that we have and everything that we are and every place that we could ever go, God is the author and the finisher of our lives, of our faith of our story. God is there. Who I am, I belong to him. Amen. Amen. Who you are, you belong to him. Amen. I'm closing. I'm closed. I didn't say it all I can say. But endure hardness. Don't lose heart. Don't abandon the ship just because the ship gets a little rocky. There's situations in the word of God where the whole ship collapsed and just crumbled under them with the waves and they grabbed hold to buoys to make it to the shore. God's going to protect you. No matter what's going on in your life, you got to understand that God's going to protect you. We have a faithful pastor. We don't want anything to ever happen concerning the Spurgeon situation. Or the Paul situation. Or the David situation. So with everything that we have within us, we cover him. With everything. Does not matter what life brings my way. I'm on a mission. Some of you know me from other places. Some of you know me from other churches. I don't think I've changed that much. You know me from other places. I always cover the man of God. Never been a pastor. Was an assistant pastor for probably 14 years. Don't worry about titles. I don't care. You call me John. I'm not, I'm an elder, but I don't, I don't care. I'm on a mission. How many of you know we're on a mission? If you're on a mission, clap your hands. <laughs> clap your hands unto the Lord. Clap your hands unto the Lord. God is good to us. He takes care of us. He seals and protects everything about us. He shields us. He stretches out his arms unto us. He loves us. Your problems won't last always. Go through some things. Amen. Stand into your feet. God bless all of you for being here for you. I pray you receive something from this word. Amen. I pray God has blessed you through this understanding of the word. Don't leave the blessed place. Wherever your blessed place may be, your testimony is yours. I know where mine is. Mine is in service. And sometimes that's service unto man, but it's always service to God. Amen, somebody. Don't leave your blessed place. Amen. It ain't about your gifts. It ain't about your talents. It ain't about what you have. It ain't about you trying to shine brighter than the next nickel. Amen. I said nickel. 
It ain't about none of that. It's about you being the best you that you can be. You standing upright before God. You doing the best work you can possibly do. Amen. Hello, everybody. I am so excited. I thank God for the Tabernacle Church. Tabernacle Church of God in Christ here in South Haven is one of God's miracles. This is a huge miracle. It was December 2019 that God said start a church. We didn't know where, we didn't know how, and for sure, we didn't know that COVID was coming. God gave us the plan of church. We had obstacles looking around the entire metro area, but God led us here to South Haven. It was a God thing. But then COVID hit. We didn't know what to do, didn't know how to do it, but God showed himself. We began this church really as an outreach, giving out 6,000 boxes of food a week. We went beyond that, 6,000 boxes of food a week, to then being able to start services. June 2020, in the midst of the pandemic, we began services Sunday nights, then October, 2020 we began services in this building we took full possession full schedule serving and now god is accelerating doing the work we are a part of a great miracle there are great people of god it's beyond my comprehension what god is doing but now if it, what God has done in the past few years, he wants to take us to the next level. I believe in this season, there's divine acceleration. And as God is accelerating the church, he's accelerating the lives of God's people so that we can be a blessing. We want to pay this place off. We owe it's $10 million worth of property, 17 acres, 100,000 square feet, 850 parking spaces. But God wants to do even more, not just to have church for church sake, but to be open every day, a beacon to the community community, a light. We, once we pay this place off, we're going to launch our Christian school K through 12. Take our children out of the mouth of the dragon and educate and raise up soldiers. We're going to also build on this side of the church building, a senior apartment facility. Yes, at least 200 units where our seniors will be able to stay and we'll be able to minister and share. And at the lower level will be a place for businesses. And one of the things will be a restaurant, a healthy restaurant to feed our people so that we can be healthy. In addition to that, God is going to free us up to utilize his resources to have a pregnancy center on this side. Yes, prenatal care to make sure our mothers are well taken care of, to prevent abortions. Those who felt like there's no other hope but abortion will have prenatal care, uh, postnatal care to prevent from infant mortality and uh, care for childbirth to prevent from the crisis of morbidity during childbirth. In addition to that, the gym on the other side, we're going to have it as a wellness a health and wellness center where there'll be uh you won't have to go to lifetime fitness but that we can focus on the health of people things in addition to that our bible training center where people will be able to earn degrees from associates all the way through to doctors all of this is already in motion in addition to that our youth center youth activity center which will be above the gym our senior activity center which will be this is actually started now which is starting here in the church and finally our record label there are so many things that are happening it's so great that what god is doing and the beautiful thing is once we leverage that and leverage the land that god has given us all of these things are already set in motion through partnerships we won't have to raise any more money we won't have to do anything god is going to do a miracle in this place in our homes and our lives and I'm excited to be a part of the miracle.